There are a whole bunch of different ways that you can deploy your application to app service. And in an ideal world, that way is usually repeatable and automated. Sometimes we just need to test something out and then it's okay for it to just be like an easy drag and drop kind of experience. Zip deploy enables that and there's a UI for it that I didn't know existed until very recently. Let's mash on that. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. In today's episode, we're gonna take a look at zip deployment and the UI for it. Yeah. So I was recently doing a bootcamp on Azure fundamentals. And one of the things was they gave us like a package of a, an application to deploy that was just like a compiled like web forms type of application. And they sent us to a URL to go and like do a drag and drop zip deployment of that. And I had no idea that that existed. So I thought I'd kind of walk through that today. So uh, deploying a zip file to Azure App Service, it's something that I've known exists existed, um, like this concept of zip deploy. And the way that I've usually done it is through um, like the AZ command line where you do AZ web app deployment source config dash zip and you tell it what app you're deploying to and then you give it a zip file that you're going to upload. Um, and I've, I've done that a few times and then there's like tasks within Azure DevOps that also do the same thing where you're just, you give it a zip file, it uploads it and the app gets deployed. Um, so what I've done is I've created a new application here called zip deploy sample. It's just a standard web app hosted an app service web application. When I go to the URL, it's just that, that home or welcome page that we usually get when we create a new Azure web app. And what I have here is I did a file new project and instead of what I usually do, which is an ASP.NET Core application, I picked a WinForms app or WebForms application. It would have been uh, very impressed if you deployed a WinForms app. Yes, that into a web app, that would have been very impressive. I don't think we're quite there yet. There are some projects, I think, out there around that, but no. I'm Probably sure. post them in an ActiveX control or something. Uh, okay, so it's just, you know, a file new project for a, a WinForms app, WebForms app. And on the about page here, I'm just displaying the machine name of the machine that's uh, that this is running on. So that's really the only change that I did was added this to it. And let's just do a, we're going to do a publish here just to compile it into this .app.publish folder. So it's just a local file deployment. And then I can go to that folder and I see that um, there's the, the compiled application. Now this scenario has actually come up for me a few times in the past where uh, like it's a maybe a third party that's built the application for you and they just give you this folder and they say, deploy it to your web server, right? So what we can do is just take this and we're going to send it to a zip file. I'm going to call that v1 of my app. And we're going to go find that web deploy UI. So when we come in here to, uh, I'm in the Azure portal for my web app. If I scroll down to advanced tools and click go, that's going to take me to that, what's it called, the Kudu portal? Yeah. That has all of these interesting things that you can kind of go and get more information about the application that's running in there. One of the things in here is a zip push deploy. If I can go in here, it's going to show me what's currently deployed in my www root, and that's that hosting start.html. I can take this zip file and drag it into there, hmm. and that's going to kick off a zip deployment for me. And it even gives me the status of what's happening. So they gave it a new deployment ID. And you can see that it uploaded all the files. And there's usually a log that gets displayed here. There it is. So it shows me everything that happened and that the deployment was successful. So now when we come back to our app, I hit refresh. It's gonna spin that up. I when I created this, I selected the under configuration. I'm 
their general settings. Yeah, I said .NET version was ASP.NET v4.8. So it should have .NET Framework there and available for me. And there's my WinForms application, Web Forms application, and there's my, uh, that's the name of the uh, app service instance that happens to be serving up my web app right now. Mm. So that's that's all there is to it. Um, you just, it's really just a drag and drop on this page that I didn't know existed on the Kudu portal. So uh, we could even take just something very something else that just had like some static HTML on it. Um, so I went and searched for awesome ugly sites and found this one from Jessica up on GitHub. I just downloaded the zip folder and I'm going to go and drag that into here and then we'll see what that one looks like. So that should, because it's a zip deployment, it's going to go and clean up anything that was there and update my dubdub root with the contents of this zip folder that I'm uploading. And that appears to be done already. It was very fast. And when I come in here, what's it going to look like now? I expect it to be awesomely ugly. Ooh, sloss, 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 or awesome. Mm -hmm. Look at me. Nothing happens. Oh, wait. Oh. This has curled me down. It's a, it's a nice sight. I like it. Sure is. <laughs> Everything you want to know about sloths. Mm -hmm. So there is a bit of information that you can see here if you go to the debug console. Um, if I can remember the paths to get there. So this debug console shows you a history of, or it shows you the file system on that app service. If I go to site and deployments, I can see the, the two different deployments that I did. So one of those being my... Um, the, the actual app and one of them being the sloth site. Um, and there you can see the logs, so I can to click edit. I can edit that, see where it was, um, in this case, deleting all of those other files and then probably uploading the, yeah, my awesome sloth site. So this was the sloth deployment, deployment which is the really fast one, ironically. And this one would have been my first deployment. So you do have that full information here about what it did. Uh, and then if you look at the active file here, this is gonna be the one that says, which is the active deployment. Okay. So that points to, and I, now I clicked a button I didn't intend to click. So it was one that started in six, I believe. Take a look at that site. Deployments, deployments. So this was my active one, the sloth site. Um, but I, the history is still there of all the deployments that happened. And you can go back and look. And then uh, what's latest.json is probably just a little more information about which one is currently deployed. Again, that's the one that started in 6 okay. How it was created, how it got there. So there's additional information there if you need to debug what's happening, but I think this is pretty useful for the scenarios where you just need to, you have like a packaged up application that you need to just test out an app service. You can quickly create one manually and just drag and drop it in there. Yeah, it's great. It's really quick to be able to do that. I like it. Mm -hmm. That's all I had for today, Simon. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Remember to like, comment and share and drag your subscriptions over to us. See everybody on next week's episode. Bye. Bye.